Hello, Sam Moser here. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe and trying to stay in as much as possible right now. So this week's video is gonna be a little shorter and it's gonna focus on just one question. And that is how do you calculate what size battery you need for your camper? Let's just jump right into it. The capacity of a battery is usually listed as an amp hour rating. So for example, you might have a 12 volt battery, which is listed as 200 amp hours. And if we wanted to oversimplify it, we could say that this battery could provide a 12 volt load with 200 amps of current for one hour. Although if you remember from the last video, if this is a lead acid battery and you were to discharge it that quickly, the actual capacity would be less. Also, you would really only want to use one half of the capacity. So it would be more realistic to say we have 100 amp hours of usable capacity. That would mean it could provide 10 amps of current for 10 hours, or it could provide five amps of current for 20 hours. You can probably see the pattern there. The formula for amp hours is pretty simple. It's essentially just the number of amps times the number of hours gives you an amp hour value. Amp hours expresses the capacity in terms of the current, but it doesn't have anything to do with the voltage. You might also see the capacity given in terms of watt hours, and the formula is still pretty simple here. So watts are a measurement of power, and power is simply the voltage times current. And let me put in the units here, so that would be watts, volts, amps. Watt hours then simply follows as voltage times amp hours. Now going back to our previous example, the 12 volt 200 amp hour battery would have 24 watt hours and that's just 12 times 200. Hopefully my handwriting isn't too bad. I wanted to try a little different format in terms of putting information up on the screen. And I thought this might be a little quicker than doing the editing where I overlay all the text. Now that we know how battery capacity is expressed, how do we estimate how much we need? So this is a fairly simple exercise, but the part that can be a little tedious is just searching around for all the details you need. So the first thing you do is basically just make a list of all the items that you want to power day to day in your van. Then for each item, you need to figure out how much power it uses and then sum them all up. Let's go through this for a single item first, and then I'll show you a spreadsheet I made to sum everything up. Let's use a roof vent fan as our example, because I think just about every camper is going to have one of these. Okay, so the power equals the voltage times the current. My van has the Max Fan Deluxe. It runs on 12 volts, and from the manufacturer's website, it says it uses the following currents depending on which speed setting it's at. Most of the time we run our fan pretty low, but if we're cooking or if it's really hot, then we'll turn it up pretty high. So let's say on average, it's drawing about 0.8 amps. And then let's say we run it for 10 hours a day. So that gives us 0.8 amps times 10 hours. And that simply equals eight amp hours. So if you look at everything you're gonna power in your van in terms of how much current it uses at 12 volts or whatever your battery capacity is, then this is really as complicated as it needs to get. We'll just come up with this amp hour usage per day for each item and then sum that all together. But if you have items at different voltages, then you might wanna look at everything in terms of its watt hours instead. So for the above example, we'd first calculate its power use in watts. So that's simply gonna be 12 volts times 0.8 amps equals, I think that's 9.6 watts. Then we have 9.6 watts times 10 hours equals 96 watt hours. Yep, and then from there, you could sum everything up in terms of watt hours. And if you wanna go back from watt hours to amp hours, you just divide by the voltage. So in this case, it would be 96 watt hours divided by 12 volts, and you'd be back at eight amp hours. Now let's switch over and look at a spreadsheet I made to estimate the power usage for my van. And I cleaned up the spreadsheet, but this is based off of the one I used when I was planning my electrical system. Okay, 
So here we basically just have a table that lists off most of the items and then gives their voltage and current rating. And this isn't every single thing we power in the van, but this was, you know, the main things kind of used day to day. Yeah, I have two versions here, just kind of first a simplified one where all the currents are given at their 12 volt value. And then I have another one on this tab where we actually have different voltages and then so we calculate the power. And you know, some things like a cell phone charger usually runs on five volts. Um, I didn't list it here, but I have a fan in the back of my van that actually runs at 24 volts. So there's a little regulator that steps up the voltage for that. I'll make this spreadsheet available for you to download and play with. And I'll put a link to that in the video description. So let's look at the simpler version that just lists everything in terms of the current pulled at 12 volts. And after just listing out all the individual things and their current, then we want to look at the quantity of each of those. So for things like the lights, the current value I had was for a single light, but I have eight lights in my van. So added in a quantity row and then an estimate of the hours I'll use each of these per day. And all the values here are just estimates. These aren't really measured or exact values, but from my experience, the sums here came out pretty close to our actual power consumption. So then basically, you know, tally the amp hours. And I think it's useful to do this for a couple different scenarios because you're not going to be using your van exactly the same all the time. So a good way to break it up is warm weather, cool weather, you know, summer, winter. And, you know, the big differences here are like the heater, which the heater span consumes a pretty reasonable amount of power. And that's not used at all when you're in warm weather. And then, you know, conversely, your fridge is going to use more power when you're in warm weather versus in cool weather. It has to work harder to keep everything cool in there. So I think that's a good way to break it up and just kind of get your estimate for those two different scenarios. So from here, we see my warm weather scenario was about 63.8 amp hours and for cold weather, 58.2. So both pretty similar, kind of right around 60 amp hours per day. So then we want to look at this in terms of what size battery we would want if this is how much power we're using every day. So how does this impact the battery size? So if we only had a 100 amp hour battery and we were using close to 64 amp hours in one day, well, we would have a depth of discharge close to 64% and the state of charge down 36%. So that's much below that 50% state of charge that we don't want a lead acid battery to drop below. If you have a lithium battery, then 100 amp hours would be plenty. So 200 amp hours, that looks a little better. We'd be at 32-ish percent depth of discharge. And that's pretty good. You know, if you were to then go two days in a row, without any recharge, you'd now be below a 50% state of charge. But in my scenario, that is the battery size I went with, and I figured that I'd be getting at least some charge every day. You know, in the winter, maybe that's only from driving a little, charging from the alternator. If you want to be able to go more days in a row without having to charge your batteries at all, you know, extended periods of snowy or cloudy weather, then you might wanna size your battery up even further. So if you were to go up to 300 amp hours, then in a single day, you'd only be using just a little over 20% of your battery. And then just below that, I put just kind of the same thing, but in different terms. So say you only wanted to go down to a 30% depth of discharge, then your battery size would need to be just over 200 amp hours. So if you want, download this spreadsheet, put in your own, you know, put in your own list of items and play with the values. Another thing to think about is if you're using solar power, you know, you're often not going to be at your full depth of discharge by the end of the day because as you were as you were using some of these things during the day, the lights and the fan, if it was sunny, you were also charging at the same time. So I found in my scenario having a 200 amp hour battery and consumption that looked about like this that it all worked pretty well. But keep in mind that every day I did need at least some charge going back to the battery. And with a lead acid battery, it's always best if you get that battery back up to a full charge as often as possible. Okay, so I think that'll about do it for this video. If you liked the video and wanna see more of these, please subscribe to my channel. For the time being, I'm gonna do more videos about the van build series. I'll have a couple more on the electrical system here, and then I'll get into the rest of the build. I want to get back to building things again, and right now I don't really have a workshop set up, 
So after I finish out these van build videos, that'll probably be my next set of videos is getting some sort of a portable workshop set up again. All right. See you next time. Bye.